All right, so we've got a block which is being pressed up against a wall by this push force, which is acting at some angle theta relative to the horizontal axis. Now between the block and the wall, there's some coefficient of friction mu, but the issue in this problem is that friction can act in either direction on this block, depending on which way the block is trying to slide along the wall. Now in this problem, we're gonna to try to solve for the maximum and minimum values of this push force that are gonna allow the block to stay at rest. Now the issue people run into in solving for these two values is that the free body diagram is slightly different in the two different situations. So let's start with our free body diagram for this minimum push force. We know there's gravity acting downward on the block. And because this push force is pressing the block up against the wall, the wall is gonna push back on the block. So there's gonna be a normal force between the wall and the block acting to the left on this block. Now in this situation where we're pushing as lightly as possible in order to keep this block from sliding down the wall, the friction between the block and the wall is actually gonna be keeping the block from sliding down the wall. That means the friction force is actually gonna be acting up on this block. And I'm gonna make this red just, just cause I like it that way. And that's it for our free body diagram. We've got these four forces acting on the block. So all we need to do now is just plug these forces into Newton's second law in both the X and Y axis. Now because the block is staying still, we're gonna say the sum of all forces in each axis is zero. Now looking first at the horizontal axis, we only have two forces which are acting horizontally. The first is the push force, the second being the normal force. Now I'm gonna to say to the right is positive, which means the horizontal component of the push force, I'll call that FPX, minus the normal force, it's negative because it's to the left, is gonna be zero. Now if you look at this as a right triangle, you'll see the horizontal component of the push force is just FP times the cosine of theta. So substituting that in up here, we'll get the normal force is equal to the horizontal component of the push force or FP cosine theta. Looking at the Y axis, there's three forces acting vertically. We've got the push force acting upward. I call that FPY plus the friction force, which is acting upward. And then we've got gravity downwards. I'm gonna say that's negative FG, and those all add up to zero. Now, just like we broke up the horizontal components or really the push force into its horizontal components to get FB cosine theta, FPY is gonna be FP sine theta. So substituting that in up here, we've got FP sine theta plus our friction force and remember, friction is given by mu Fn. I'll leave this as Fn for a moment. We're gonna set that equal to the force by gravity. That's mg, where m is the mass of this block. Now we don't know the normal force, but remember, we came up with an expression for the normal force over here. So in order to solve for our push force, I'm just gonna substitute that in right there. and rearranging this equation for FP. We get this expression. So if we substitute in the numbers from up here, we get the minimum push force is 109.5 Newtons. Now moving on to this maximum push force, a couple of weird things happen. The first thing has to do with friction. You see, if we push real hard on this block, it's gonna try to slide up the wall, which means rather than having friction acting upward on the block, it's gonna be acting downward on the block. And while we're still looking at applying Newton's second law, just like we did here, the friction's gonna be in the opposite direction, and that's gonna change a few key terms. You see, just like before, we're gonna say the sum of all forces in each axis is zero. Now in the x-axis, absolutely nothing changes. But in the y-axis, there's one key difference. That is friction's acting in the opposite direction. So rather than seeing a positive friction term like we did here, so we make it negative in Newton's second law here. 
Now, FPY is still the vertical component of our push force over here. Oh, which I didn't label before. We'll do that now. And again, subbing this term in here. We're going to do exactly what we did over here, and that is sub in this term for Fn into our function right there. And while this result for the maximum push force is unremarkably similar to what we found over here for our minimum push force, that little negative right there can cause all sorts of trouble. So let's plug in the numbers from the problem and I'll show you what I mean. You see, the issue in this problem is the relationship between mu, the coefficient of friction, and theta, the angle of this push force. And really it shows up in the math here in that there's a possibility that we could push on this block and no matter how hard we pushed, it would never move up. And mathematically what that looks like is if mu was large for a given theta, this negative mu cosine theta term would be greater in magnitude than the sine theta term, ultimately making the denominator of this fraction negative thus making our result make absolutely no sense. Regardless, I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.